subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and never miss an update from latestly where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into dreamy and desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by the into ever widening thought and action into the heaven of freedom my father let my country away an unjust law might not have the same moral legitimacy as a just law but it might still command the obedience of some sections of the society to the detriment of others what is clear is that both these thoughts highlights certain facets of what is meant by the term law i think that any law backed by a sovereign must be tempered by certain ideals of tenets of justice only a state that is governed by such law can be said to have the rule of law the british colonial power enacted various laws to further their economic and political interests at the cost of the colonized the british used the law as a tool of a political repression enforcing it unequivocal on the parties with a different set of rules for the british and for the indians it was an enterprise famous by for rule by law rather than rule of law rule by law rather than rule of law as it aimed at controlling the indian subjects judicial remedies lost their significance as they were administered keeping in view the best interests of the colonial power rather than what was just or legal members of society have right to participate in creation of reinforcement of laws that regulate their behavior we live in a democracy the very essence of a democracy is that its citizenry has a role to play whether directly or indirectly in the laws that govern them in india it is done through elections where the people get to exercise their universal adult franchise to elect them people from the part of the parliament which enact laws incidentally we the indian people have give ourselves the universal adult franchise from day one of the coming into existence of a republic unlike some of the advanced democracies in the 17 national general elections in the 17 national general elections held so far the people have changed the ruling party or combination of parties eight times which accounts for nearly 50% of the number of general elections in spite of large scale inequalities illiteracy backwardness poverty and the alleged ignorance the people of independent india have proved themselves to be intelligent and up to the task the masses have performed their duties reasonably well now it is the turn of the of those who are manning the key organs of the state to ponder if they are living up to the constitutional mandate
it has always been well recognized that the mere right to change the ruler once every five few years by itself need not be a guarantee against tyranny the idea that people are the ultimate sovereign is also to be found in notion of human dignity and autonomy a public discourse that is both reasoned and reasonable is to be seen as an inherent aspect of human dignity and and hence essential to a properly functioning democracy as professor julie stone observed in his book the province of law elections day to day political discourses criticisms and voicing the protest is integral to the democratic process the judiciary is the primary organ which is tasked with ensuring that the laws which are enacted are in line with the constitution this is one of the main functions of the judiciary that of judicial review of laws the supreme court has held this function to be a part of the basic structure of the constitution which means that the parliament cannot curtail the same but the importance of the judiciary should not blind us to the fact that the responsibility of safeguarding constitutionalism lies not just on the courts all the three organs of the state that is the executive legislature and the judiciary are equally repositories of the constitutional trust the role of the judiciary and scope of judicial actions is limited as it is only pertains to the facts based before it this limitation calls for other organs to assume responsibilities of upholding constitutional values and ensuring justice in the first place with the judiciary acting as an important check For the judiciary to apply checks on governmental power and action, it has to have complete freedom. The judiciary cannot be controlled directly or indirectly by the legislature or the executive, or else the rule of law would become illusory. At the same time, judges should not be swayed by the emotion, emotional pitch of public opinion either, which is getting amplified through social media platforms. Judges. have to be mindful of the fact that the noise thus amplified is not necessarily reflective of what is right and what is majority believes in the new media tools that have enormous amplifying ability are incapable of distinguishing between right and wrong good and bad and the real and fake therefore media trials cannot be a guiding factor in deciding cases it is therefore extremely vital to function independently and withstand all external aids and pressures the rule of law is a dynamic concept which must be employed to safeguard and advance the civil and political rights of individuals in a free society now more than 70 years down the line the entire world is facing an unprecedented crisis in the form of covid-19 at this juncture we necessarily have to pause and ask ourselves as to what extent we have used the rule of law to ensure protection to and welfare of all of our people i do not intend to provide an evaluation of the same but both my office and my temperament prevent me from doing so but i begin to feel that this pandemic might yet be a mere curtain raiser to much larger crisis in the decades to come surely we must at least begin the process of analyzing what we did right and where we went wrong very important is the issue of gender equality traditional rules of changing within the family as is the structure of the family itself most nations have recognized equality and dignity of women either constitutionally or statutorily the legal empowerment of women not only enables them to advocate for their rights and needs in society but it also increases their visibility in the legal reform process 
and allow their participation in it. Bias and prejudice necessarily lead to injustice, particularly when it relates to the minorities. Consequently, the application of the principles of rule of law in respect of vulnerable sections has to necessarily be more inclusive of their social conditions that hinder their progress.